the archaeologists and the prehistorians, people are looking at that, have failed to take into account the severity of these events we're talking about. You don't realize the extent of the total remodeling of this planetary surface that took place. Because the question always is, where are the artifacts? Where's the pottery? Where is the, the evidence that this civilization existed? Randall Carlson's theory about advanced ancient civilizations is truly fascinating and a bit of a departure from what we usually hear in mainstream archaeology. He's suggesting that highly sophisticated societies might have existed tens of thousands of years ago, way before the traditional cradles of civilization like Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Indus Valley and China came into the picture. Imagine civilizations thriving before or even during the last ice age, which wrapped up around 11,700 years ago. That idea alone pushes back the conventional timeline of human development by several thousand years. Now, when you look at the evidence Carlson brings to the table, it's primarily centered around those massive and mystifying megalithic structures scattered across the globe. Take the pyramids of Giza, for example. Their alignment with the stars of Orion's belt and the precision of their construction is just mind-blowing. Or Stonehenge with its solstitial alignment standing there on the Salisbury Plain. Two of these shafts um, go all the way through the body of the pyramid and exit on the outside and, and actually point at particularly significant stars. These structures suggest that the people who built them had a far more advanced understanding of astronomy than we usually give them credit for. Carlson dives into the engineering and architectural skills of these ancient builders. He talks about how they constructed these massive stone structures, some involving stones weighing several tons. Just think about the logistics of transporting and precisely placing these enormous stones over great distances. It indicates a level of engineering know-how and physical physics that seems way ahead of their time. Now moving on. Randall Carlson's theory about ancient civilizations is absolutely something different, isn't it? He really makes you think about the roots of our history in a new way. Just consider the megalithic structures scattered all over the world. When you account for the rise of sea level and the, the isostatic subsidence of the sea floor, it's not at all implausible that you had a large island complex in the mid-Atlantic Ocean. Carlson sees these as evidence of advanced prehistoric civilizations. The Great Pyramid of Giza, for example, is made up of over two million stone blocks, each weighing tons, and they're all placed with incredible precision. It's not just about the sheer size, but the sophistication in their construction. And it's not just in one place. These megalithic structures are everywhere, from the stone circles in Europe to the pyramids in Egypt and Mesoamerica. Carlson points out that the similarities in construction techniques and astronomical alignments across different cultures hint at a possibly shared or globally distributed source of knowledge. It's like these ancient builders were all tapping into the same advanced understanding, which is pretty mind-blowing to think about. Now, where it gets even more intriguing, is how Carlson links the disappearance of this advanced knowledge to catastrophic events. He often refers to the younger Dryas impact hypothesis, suggesting that a comet impact might have triggered drastic climatic changes at the end of the Ice Age. You may have periods of time where you have multiple impacts occurring over a short period of time associated with the destruction and disintegration of large comets. Imagine massive flooding, climate shifts, and entire civilizations collapsing. It's like something out of a movie, but Carlson suggests it could be what wiped out these advanced societies and their knowledge. But here's the thing. He thinks this lost knowledge didn't just vanish. According to Carlson, it lived on in myths, legends, and religious texts, which he sees not just as stories, but as historical records. Take the flood myths, for example, like Noah's Ark or the Epic of Gilgamesh. Carlson sees these as allegorical references to actual historical events, like massive post-glacial flooding. He believes that remnants of knowledge from these advanced civilizations were passed down through generations albeit in a fragmented and symbolically encoded way. Moving back to megalithic structures, Randall Carlson's work on the astronomical alignments of megalithic structures is like peeling back layers of history to reveal the deep astronomical knowledge of ancient civilizations. Take the megalithic temples of Malta, Hagar Kim and Manajra, for instance. These structures aren't just old, they're among the oldest freestanding structures in the world, dating back to around 3,600. 3200 BC. 
What's really remarkable about them is how they demonstrate an intricate understanding of celestial movements, particularly the solar cycle. When you look at these temples, especially during the equinoxes, it's like watching a celestial dance choreographed by ancient architects. At Menajdra on the equinoxes, the sunlight filters through a specific aperture, illuminating an inner stone slab. It's this incredible precision that highlights how the builders weren't just stacking stones, they were aligning them with celestial events, marking the change of seasons with architectural precision. But it's not just about alignments. The architectural design itself is a marvel. Some reference to such an event can be traced in many of the legends and myths surrounding these stars that have come down to us from nations far removed from each other. The layout of the temples seems carefully planned to align with the sun's position at significant times of the year. For example, the main axis of Hagar Chim is almost perfectly oriented to where the sun rises during the solstices. It shows a level of planning and understanding of the sun's movements. And then there's the construction itself. We're talking about huge megaliths, each weighing several tons, placed with such accuracy that they align with celestial events. It wasn't just a matter of brute force, it required sophisticated knowledge of astronomy and construction techniques. Plus, they used local limestone, which is abundant in Malta. The complexity of these temples goes beyond just their size or the weight of the stones. They have multiple apses, altars and intricate carvings, all forming part of a complex architectural design. The series of semicircular chambers connected by a central corridor and their alignment with specific astronomical events the pyramids of Giza, especially the Great Pyramid, the precision with which these pyramids align to the cardinal points of the compass is just mind-boggling. Think about it. The Great Pyramid, built for Pharaoh Khufu around 2580-2560 BC, is aligned almost perfectly north, south, east and west. The northern side aligns to within a fraction of a degree of true north. Considering the era it was built in, that's an incredible feat of geometry and astronomy. The construction techniques themselves are a mystery. The ancient Egyptians might have used stars or the sun's path to find true north, which implies they had advanced surveying techniques and a deep understanding of angles and straight lines. It's impressive when you consider the tools and technology available at the time. Then there's the fascinating Orion correlation theory. This theory suggests that the layout of the three main pyramids at Giza mirrors the stars in Orion's belt. Proponents like Robert Beauval believe this alignment was intentional, reflecting a belief in the connection between the heavens and the afterlife. They speak of these two regions of the sky, the southern sky with the stars of Orion, and there's the move one slide up. Here's a nice view of them. They're pristine, by the way. It's really eerie how they carve those texts by hand, and some of the details is extraordinary. With Orion associated with Osiris, the god of rebirth and the afterlife, the pyramids in this view were not just tombs, but also celestial maps and gateways for the pharaoh's soul to the afterlife. The smallest pyramid, Menkaure's pyramid, is slightly offset, mirroring the offset of the smallest star, Mintaka, in Orion's belt, which adds another layer of intrigue to this theory. The design of the pyramids also incorporates alignments with the sun and specific stars and constellations. For example, certain shafts within the Great Pyramid align with particular stars. These could have been more than architectural features. They might have held spiritual significance, possibly serving as pathways for the pharaoh's soul to the stars. Also, on specific days of the year, the sun sets between the pyramids, creating a visual spectacle likely significant in ancient Egyptian ceremonies. Now one of the most known megalithic structures. Would it be fair to say that there's an element of a rediscovery of a yes. lost technology from the past? I think it would be fair to say that, yes. Stonehenge, out there on the Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England. What's particularly fascinating about Stonehenge is its astronomical alignment and how it was constructed. The way it lines up with the summer solstice is probably what it's most famous for. On the longest day of the year, the sun rises right over the heel stone, which is set just outside the main stone circle. As the sun comes up, its rays shoot straight through the entrance and light up the center of the circle. Stonehenge also aligns with the winter solstice and possibly other celestial events. During the winter solstice, the sunset is framed by those massive stone trilithons, and some experts think it might even line up with lunar phenomena, which just adds another layer to how the builders understood both the sun and the moon's movements. When you think about how Stonehenge was built, it's even more mind-blowing. 
The final form was completed around 2500 BC, but it was built in phases over about 1,500 years. The main part of the monument is made up of these huge sarsen stones arranged in a circle, and there are smaller blue stones that were brought over from Wales. That's over 150 miles away. And then there's the layout of the stones. They're set up in this specific geometric pattern with an outer circle, an inner horseshoe arrangement, and those trilithon structures. The precision in the layout and how the stones are oriented show a really deep understanding of geometry and astronomy. It's not just a bunch of rocks placed randomly. Everything at Stonehenge is set up with purpose and meaning, which makes you wonder a little bit, doesn't it?